Hello everybody, this is Chris Mackey and this is your 19th tutorial on Honeybee Energy Simulation and this is the only one where we're going to be delving deep into uh, loads, into, into lighting and equipment and plug loads and, and in terms of ventilation loads and, and all those, those things. That, that, that's what this video is devoted to that. Um, and I know, I know we're kind of, if you're jumping in the middle of the series, I know we're kind of starting off with a pretty, pretty complicated file. But I mean, if you're jumping in the middle of the series, the only thing that you really need to know is that we've made these honeybee zones of my parents' house here, which are nothing more than, I mean, if you, if you know, if I was to take a beer up here, they're nothing more than, um, than boundary representations, essentially, with, with that have, had, you know, all the properties of zones assigned to them. And everything we're going to be doing in this video is just in between these zones, which we you know modified all these constructions and all these different things for in the previous videos and the running of the energy simulation so every everything that we're doing here is just in between these so don't don't worry about all this it's uh, you know it's 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 there it's because we've been working on it but uh, but really all the all the action is going to be happening in between these two all right so so how do you let's see we have these zones that are coming out here that we're visualizing over here but there, there's a question of how do we change the the loads of them and uh, and that that is actually it's relatively straightforward to do in honeybee there's a component under under the eighth the eighth honeybee tab here um, that is called uh, you know as as one might expect to set uh, set energy plus zone loads and uh, and all we need to do is drag and drop this component onto our canvas and you guys will see that, I mean, the structure is very similar to a lot of the other components that we use where we pass the honeybee zones through the component and, you know, and we, and we get out honeybee zones with modified properties. And I mean, you know, that was the case for the constructions that we did here for solving adjacencies between the, the components, for the assigning glazing, for all these things. I mean, all these things going back. So I mean, you guys know certainly by this point that that's that's you know kind of the way that that honeybee energy modeling is structured. That you pass zones, you change the properties. Okay. So all right. So now we have these zones coming out here. These these uh, you know maybe we'll just drop a panel so you guys see. I mean I know I showed you that they were B reps, uh, but you know it's it's just a, a list of B reps. And you know what? Well, maybe actually, well, I know we simplify them coming out of here. Actually, you know, that's okay. I mean, so it's, you'll notice that each one is on its own list. Uh, and that's just the convention that, you know, you might get used to uh, if you use Grasshopper enough. That's different than having them all in one list. Um, but, you, you know, either way, either way, this component will be able to take any type and you'll be able to change all the equipment loads, infiltration loads. And, and I'll go through what each of these mean in a second. But all right, the first thing we have to do is hook up our honeybee zones to to uh, to our, our 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 set loads component, our our set energy plus loads, and it will take a second because it goes and it reads through all those zones, and you know, and these zones are pretty complex that we have here because there's all this glazing and extra stuff on them. Um, and different things that we've assigned to them too. So I mean, so you notice that I mean, the file can get heavier as you go move further along. But uh, but all right, to kind of uh, yeah, there we go. So you'll see what this component outputs by default um, is. You know that you'll get out of here. Uh, loads for each of the zones that you put in there. It'll actually it will print what the what the uh, equipment load per per area per unit floor area. And this is this is actually something because I know I know and and actually if you're using the most recent version of Honeybee, we didn't exactly include the units uh, in the descriptions we have now. And like I mean if you if you ever guys ever sync with our GitHub, um, so I mean so certainly the next version you'll be able to hover over any of these things and see what the units are. But but please forgive us. I mean we'll print out these numbers so that you know what the loads are but uh, but you know you'll just have to go by by what I tell you they are in this video for um, uh, for, for for unit sizes so okay so so you'll see that we get equipment load per area and that you know equipment just refers to things like computers uh, like appliances like coffee makers um, like TV screens those types of things would all, all fall under fall under equipment and you can see, I mean, if I hover over this, the units that you input there are watts per meter squared. And so you can see that the, all these zones had default values applied to them. So actually, so right now, these, uh, all these, these zones had a default of 3.875 watts per meter squared uh, applied to them. Uh, and I mean, and that's, well, I don't know, I guess maybe, maybe for my parents' house, 
Uh, you know, I would say maybe normally that that it, it might be on the low side for a lot of these things because we're using a schedule for an apartment. And, you know, it's really kind of just these days my, my parents living in this pretty big house. Um, well, I, I guess, yeah, until, well, I don't know, maybe maybe they're, they'll, you know, I mean, I guess we, we have all sorts of occasions where the, the whole family gets together. But, I mean, but, yeah, usually, I mean, if it's just my two parents, so, I mean, so the equipment load per area would probably be, be lower. But actually, I mean... Given all the computer screens and everything, you know, all right, I think, yeah, I think that that's probably a pretty good, uh, you know, maybe a good bet for, for what, uh, what, what the equipment load per area might be. So, all right, so then we need, uh, next, next thing going down the list, so is infiltration per area. And so in that, you know, infiltration is just the, the air that seeps through the cracks of your building. And you notice that that usually tends to be a very, very small number because we like to build our buildings very tight and sealed up. Um, so yeah, so I mean, so that's, you know, you can change that by inputting a value here if, if, for example, your building isn't so tightly sealed up. And the units, if I scroll over this, the units for this are liters per second per square meter of floor area. And, and oh, and if I didn't clarify for the equipment, and when we said watts per square meter, that was watts per square meter of floor area. So you can imagine that you might calculate this stuff. If you have all the appliances that are on in your house at a given time, um, you add up the wattages of all those appliances, and then you divide them by the floor area. That's what you input to here. Um, and I mean, I know that's kind of a roundabout way of doing it, but it's, you know, you'll get a sense of these metrics of, of you know, of what, uh, what are typical values for in watts per meter squared for, for equipment if you, if you work in energy simulation enough. So infiltration is done in liters per second per square meter of floor area so that's the amount that's the volume of air in liters per second flowing into the zone uh, divided by the floor area of each zone so I mean I think that's pretty good for my parents house here so now we come to something like the lighting density uh, all right so lighting is is like equipment it's in watts per meter squared uh, but you can see what's being assigned for this lighting density is actually I think that's pretty high so it's going 11 watts um, uh, 11.8 watts per square meter. So I mean, if you know, I mean that maybe back in the day, I mean you'll notice sometimes some of these other these schedules and auto sign values are somewhat old. So back in the day when everything was incandescent, that was probably a pretty good estimation of 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 lighting density per square meter of floor area. But you know, I'd say today, and, and actually, well, I know, I know sometimes actually in some of these rooms of my house, my parents still have these these old heat lamps and I'm trying to get them to, to change them. But you know, all right, actually, that's a good point. I wanna show my parents that they changed all their light bulbs over to something, some type of LED, so much more efficient uh, bulb, that they would save a lot of energy in the energy simulation. So I'm gonna change the lighting density. I'm gonna bring up a panel by typing quotation marks. And let's see, what will we, we'll change it maybe down to uh, I you know I think with LEDs we can actually get pretty far down you can get down to like three watts per meter squared um, you know because I mean they're like they're like five times more efficient usually or you know pretty much more efficient than these um, than these older incandescent heat lamps so you notice if I just plug in a value and, and I could have done this for the equipment or infiltration but if I plug in that value for lighting density you'll see it will run through each of the zones and it will change you'll see in a few seconds it will change the lighting density of all the zones over to three watts per meter squared and so that if I were to rerun the simulation like that I'm just whoops okay if I were to rerun the simulation now now that there's a lighting density of three watts per meter squared you would see I mean if you guys remember back there you'd see that the electricity is a lot smaller because you know because the, the lighting load is smaller and you'd see that actually that we get less of a, of a you know of a help to our heating load inside our building because because the lights aren't producing as much heat but also that makes it easier to cool it in, in the summer and stuff so I mean so I think I mean that's usually generally a good move alright so we can change the lighting density okay this is something that I probably want to change too so the number of people per per meter squared of floor area. Again, this is this is. I mean, I know it's kind of weird to think about this because usually, as as an architect, you'll think like each person has like 20 square meters of space. So you'll think of it that way. You won't think of it the other way around, where there are as like a 0 0.05 of a person for every square meter. Usually, you don't think of it that way. But that's that's the way that Energy Plus likes it. So uh, so that's what you input here. And so, so you see by default it's inputting a uh, so 0.28 people per square meter. So what is that? Let me let me just doing a calculation. If I was to divide that by one, uh, you know, I don't actually you know this is a good opportunity to use some native math, uh, grasshopper math components. So what I, I want to divide 0 0.28. I know, I know, I'm just being lazy here. I could probably do this math in my head, but you know, I figured it's it's nice to show you guys anyway. 
283. Uh, and you know, we divide that by, <laughs> oh man, I'm, I'm so lazy. I'm gonna get so criticized for this. All right, uh, we, we, uh, we put one over. Oops, I, I put a, an enter there, just a one. And so that's, uh, so every person is getting 35 square meters of floor area. Ah, you know what, actually, maybe that is kind of indicative of, of my house. It's, it's not very, well, I don't know, you know, maybe it's a little, maybe actually I might say maybe it's one person, you know, if it's just my two parents there, maybe it's, it's each person I think should get, um, maybe, uh, uh, yeah, each person should maybe get like 50 square meters. So, all right, so maybe we'll, we'll drop this down. Let me play around with this. Maybe we'll do 1.5. And you can see, all right, so, yeah, well, that's a little too much, maybe 1.7. Uh, all right, that's about, well, one more time. Maybe boost it up to that. And that is about, okay, close enough, like 50 meters per square person. So, all right, I'm going to change. I'm going to replace the, the number of people per area with a 0. Uh, point 018 and hit well not hit enter this time um, but I'll, I'll hook that up to number of people per area and just like we change the lighting density it will change that number of people per area for all the zones in the house um, so yeah so you can you know you, you can imagine doing that pretty pretty easily um, all right and you know I'll sort of touch on the other ones here quickly I don't think there's really a need to change them um, but whoops okay all right we gotta whoops okay uh, so we've got ventilation per, per, per unit floor area and you'd see by default that's set to zero because by default the actual the simulation goes by the minimum ventilation needed per person. So this would be ventilation that comes through the mechanical system. Um, and so usually, I mean, if you want to mimic windows and stuff, uh, the opening of windows, you wouldn't really adjust this one. You'd adjust the infiltration or something like that. Um, if, if you know if you wanted to, to kind of let more outdoor air in you know for, for each person uh, you know but but if you can you can specify a minimum ventilation per person which is again is in liters per second per person and usually a good rule of thumb for that is is maybe you know is, is oh I see what that, that also is, is you know is around zero for a lot of these zones interesting uh, or, or no actually oh interesting so just for the attic uh, it looks like it might be zero, but in some of the other ones uh, that we assign differently, it has different values. All right. Well, I mean, well, you guys see it, you can see that, but I, I think the defaults of that are pretty good. The, I mean, the important thing is at the end of the day, you see, you see the loads coming out of here, and you get modified honeybee zones. Each with a, you know, each is a closed bee rep, but you know, but we know from all the past that these have properties now that have been changed. All the loads have been changed on these, and now I can just take these and plug these into my my run energy simulation component. And now when I do that this time. Uh, you know, now the, the zones will have this lower lighting density that we've specified. See, I'm going to just plug that. They'll have this lower lighting, lighting density. They'll have fewer people per area. And you guys can really start to customize these, um, you know, to really make something that, that reflects exactly what you will build and exactly the way people will use your building. So, all right. So I've covered actually only like one half of like a complete problem. So, so we've changed the loads, which are the, these values that sort of determine, you know, the amount of people in, in the zone and the, you know, and the amount of lights that are turned on and everything. But there's the, the actual things that, that run through an energy simulation are, are a combination of both the, the loads and uh, schedules. And schedules are the things that sort of tell them, okay, when are all the lights on? When do you have this lighting density of three watts per meter squared? And when is when are all the lights off? Because like clearly you're not going to leave the lights on like throughout the whole night, usually probably in a, in a house like this. So all right, so in the next few sections, we're going to get to discussing schedules. Um, but that's it for, for the, the loads. You guys get the sense of how this works. And, uh, and, and thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.